Now this is a ceramic figure of the mythical animal called the tanuki. Although we call it the mythical animal, tanukis actually do exist. In fact, they live in Japanese suburban cities and they're like the foxes that you find in uh, Britain and throughout Europe. The Japanese are very fond of this animal because it is what they call a lovable rogue. So it looks like a badger. The Japanese call it, a, I think, a badger dog. But it belongs to the badger family. And you will find these little figures outside restaurants and places like that in Japan. And they are there to welcome the guests. You see that they have a bottle of sake in one hand and then a little bag and where's this hat? And as you can see, a very lovable creature with a smiling face. And the Japanese love this creature because it represents the lovable rogue. They're mischievous, but they're not nasty or bad in any way. And they're always out to trick you. So when we use the term tanuki for trees that have a false uh, piece of driftwood, uh, we use it in a way not disparaging, but we say that a tanuki in bonsai means that you are really cheating, you're not doing the real thing, you're not carving a bonsai with proper driftwood, but the driftwood is artificial. It's been created artificially by wrapping a live tree around a dead piece of wood. So it is not part of the real tree. So you are trying to fool people. So that is the uh, derivation of the term tanuki as used in bonsai. And we will show you some examples of tanuki on some of the trees that we have on the nursery. This lovely larch, which has just shed its leaves, it is the end of October, so all the leaves have fallen. Lots of people admire this tree, and they admire the tree because of the beautiful driftwood. But I would point out that this driftwood has not been uh, part of the tree. This is a tanuki because we've used a thin larch. This is the larch, and it's been wrapped around very cleverly around a piece of very nice driftwood. So the driftwood is not part of the original tree, but it is so cleverly done. This was not done by me, but uh, we purchased it from another grower. You can see that it is now absolutely part of the tree, but the tree is a fairly young larch which has been wrapped around this piece of driftwood. It's been wrapped right around. So we are fooling people into thinking that it is part of the tree, whereas it's not really part of the tree. So this is what we call a tanuki. Now this fine juniper is a juniper with a very thick trunk and lots of driftwood in the front. And you would think that this is part of the real tree. But this again is what we call a tanuki or a false piece of driftwood added to the tree. So what has been done to this tree is that we've used several small junipers. You can see from the back. This is one tree, this is another tree, and this has been pinned to the dead wood to make it look as if the whole trunk is part of the tree. So this is what we call a false piece of driftwood. And because the driftwood is so thick and old, you think that the tree is big and old, but in fact it isn't. The young trees are not very old, they're probably about 15 or 20 years old, maybe a little more, but you could pass this off as a tree which is 80 or more years old, whereas in fact it isn't that old. So this is again cheating in a nice way. So this is when we use the term tanuki for work of this type, mainly to do with driftwood pieces that have been added artificially to the tree. In this YouTube video, I'm going to talk about commonly used 
Japanese bonsai terms or Japanese bonsai terminology. You will find that as you get into bonsai, there are quite a few people who try to impress others with their knowledge of Japanese terms. I don't really like to use too many Japanese terms because bonsai, although the Japanese are one of the best uh, you know, practitioners of bonsai, they are not really the originators of bonsai. The Chinese are the uh, people who invented bonsai in the first place and the Chinese are a very proud people and they like to use their own terms. But because bonsai has been exposed to the West for so long by uh, Japanese growers and the Japanese bonsai world, the use of Japanese terminology has become quite common. But there has been a trend in the last few years for many people to use Japanese terms as a way of impressing others who have less knowledge about bonsai. So when they use Japanese bonsai terms, they make out that they know more than you do and therefore they are a cut above you. So I don't like that. But nevertheless, certain terms are used quite a lot in bonsai and you should be aware of them. One of the most common terms you will come across in bonsai is jin or the bit of driftwood that you see on top of a tree. I will show you examples as I walk around the nursery. Jins, shari, uh, those are the very common ones. Nebari is an, another common term. Um, the others like Saba, Miki, Yuro, Atama, there are hundreds and hundreds of terms um, that are used by the Japanese, but I don't think you need to know them. But I will go through the more common ones. Now this is a very good example of a tree which has a lot of jins and sharis. So what is a jin? A jin is a piece of driftwood which is at the extremities of the branches. So in fact they've been made from branches. So jin really is a branch normally pointing up to the sky. But things like this which are the terminations of branches which have been stripped of the bark and made white, that is what we call jin. So these are jins. And shari is the white driftwood that you find on the trunk. So it's as simple as that. So you will see lots of very good examples of this. Normally they are found in nature. If you go to the mountains, you will find junipers which have natural jins and sharis. But in bonsai, very often they are carved and refined to make them more beautiful. As you can see, this is a very beautiful tree. This is a juniper sabina. And this tree, with all these beautiful twists and bends, uh, has been created by nature. In fact, most of the very beautiful junipers that you see in bonsai have been created by nature. And the bonsai artist has only added a little bit of his art to enhance the tree. So all this work has been done by nature. And these trees which are collected from the wild, the Japanese term is Yama Dori. Yama means mountain and the Dori is uh, the other part of the world. So Yama Dori literally means collected from the mountains. If you went back about a hundred years or so in Japan, or maybe even longer, a lot of the best trees were collected from the wild or collected from the mountains. Jap uh, Japan is a mountainous country, so the bonsai growers went to the mountains and discovered that some of these dramatic looking junipers and pines uh, were invariably found growing in the wild on the mountain tops. Uh, so Yamadori is the term for collecting trees from the mountains and these usually refer to trees that have these very dramatic trunks and very dramatic branches. This is a very large needle juniper or juniper rigida. They've got very spiky needles and as you can see with a thick trunk like this, this is not tanuki. This has been naturally carved. So all this driftwood, the shari has been carved and these branches which have died have been enhanced. So this branch which has died, we're going to make a gin out of this. These we will start taking the bark off and making gin. This is not completely dead, but they will eventually end up as gins. 
So trees, usually the, like uh, the juniper rigida and the juniper uh, chinensis are very suitable for making gins and sharis. The other commonly used term in bonsai is nebari. Nebari in Japanese refers to the surface roots that you find on a bonsai. Nebari is quite often used because the quality of a bonsai is determined to a large extent on the quality of its surface roots. If a bonsai doesn't have good surface roots, we sometimes refer to it as a telegraph pole. It's just a pole stuck in the ground with no surface roots. The surface roots give that feeling of stability and strength to the tree. And as you can see, this maple has got a beautiful nebari. Yeah, I've got lots of other examples of ne nebari as good, and I will show you that uh, also. But if you look at some of the other maples, the nebari on those are not as good. Now this Japanese maple has one of the best nebaris that uh, you will find on a maple. Look at it, it's beautiful and makes the tree look really old and stable and powerful. As you will see in the background, this is our Japanese garden which we made about 25 years ago. And you will find those four big Japanese garden trees. They are not imported from Japan, but they're made from ordinary native Scots pines. The trees themselves must be about 40 to 50 years old, maybe even older. And they were created over the last 25 years into those beautiful shapes. The largest tree on the right is at least 12 feet tall. You cannot visualize how big it is. If I went there and stood next to it, you'll realize it's twice the height of me. And those were created, as I say, from just ordinary Scots pines. And they are what we call Japanese garden trees. Now you will have heard the term Niwaki. Many of these landscapers try to impress people and say, oh, I've got these beautiful Niwaki. But if you know a bit of Japanese, Niwaki simply means a garden tree. Niwa in J J Japanese is garden and ki is tree. So when you refer to Niwaki, it simply means garden tree in Japanese. So there's no real kudos in being able to impress people by saying that it's a very special tree called Niwaki. It simply is referring to a garden tree.